Um, John, talk a little bit about, first of all, just about this year's ride. Uh, I think they said going into it that it was supposed to be the fourth or fifth easiest mm -hmm. ever, but I think they base that mostly off of miles, and as you know, there are a lot of other factors that go into it. Yeah, there are, Jesse. Uh, it's 442 miles, I think, this year. It has been reasonably flat the, the whole way. I think we're going to get a couple of big hills on the final day going into Dubuque, but uh, it has been flat. I think the weather's been pretty good most of the days. We had one day that got pretty darn hot up near 90, uh, but uh, all in all, we've had a little headwinds, but nothing to speak of. So I'd say it, it's been one of the more enjoyable rag brides. I've ridden quite a few, and, and it has been somewhat easy, yes. How many rag brides is this for you, John? This is my 13th, is and it? Old Yeller. She's been on it too, you know. <laughs> have, you, have you covered the ride during every one of those as well? Yes, we have. We didn't cover it as extensively early on because we didn't have the the uh, technology to send back reports uh, from from the early, you know, when we were on the western part of the state. Although, in the early days, we'd fly a crew out there on a private plane out to the western, out to the starting point, and they'd shoot something and fly it back. That was the only way to get it on. But uh, we don't do that anymore, but working with Matt Nelson, he has the computer now, and we can FTP all this stuff back, and uh, so it works out well. What other challenges do you run into covering an event that you're also riding in? Well, I, I think uh, one thing is that you, uh, you get kind of tired by the end of the week. Some of the stories seem to, to all blend together. And, you know, I had a list of stories when I came out here. I want to do this, want to do that. But I've found over the years that usually you just run into stories. You just run into them, and, and everybody out here is a story. So, uh, But there are some difficulties with writing and, and, and doing it all. It's, one of the things is, is just you know ma making your deadlines because uh, if you shoot a story at 8 in the morning, you may not get to your site till 2 o'clock, and you have to feed all the video and edit and everything. So, yeah, there's some deadline issues. Do you have to be a little bit more organized than the average rag bri rider? Uh, I think so, yeah. you know, And, and when we get done uh, riding, uh, we go to work. Everybody else sits down and has a beer or something, and we, we go to work. So, yeah, you do have to be organized, no doubt about it. You can't linger at some of those church pie stands as long as some people no. do. <laughs> Try not to, you know. It's it's wolf it down and, and get back on Old Yeller and hit the road again. But the, always with your eye out for a possible story and everything. I've noticed that some of the stories this year you've been able to, to shoot yourself while you've been riding. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a little handheld camera, and how much is that a difference from some of the other years, some of the other equipment? That, that's a big difference. That's a, that's a good observation. Uh, in the early years, I would be on my bike, and my photographer would be 30 miles away in the car with the only camera we would have. And, and even back then, you know, we didn't have a bunch of cell phones where we could communicate. So I'd see something. And he'd be 30 miles away, and we never got together, and we'd miss good stories. Now I carry a camera on the back of, of Old Yeller. I've done it for the past five or six times, I would guess. And if I see something, I can shoot it. It's, it's not the absolute best quality, but it, we, we, we do good stories with it, I think. Gotcha. Um, talk about last night's stop in Waterloo. How did, uh, how did that go for you? Well... They asked me about that too on TV this morning. They said, "What'd you do for entertainment?" We really didn't do anything. We uh, we actually stayed at the house of one of our salesmen from Channel Nine, so that was a nice situation because I thought it was going to rain last night. But uh, you know, Waterloo was fine. I, I saw the main campground, but then we went about our business. And we we stay in the campground sometimes. Sometimes we stay in houses. Sometimes we camp outside of houses. So there's there's several ways to do it. But I will say one thing, Jesse. If you're going to do rag bry. You need to stay in the campground one or two nights to really get the feel for what this event is like. If you just hole up in motels and houses, uh, you lose some of it. Gotcha. Do you think that, you know, as well as things went in Waterloo, that that might get some of the bigger cities in Iowa more stops along Rybri in the future? It might. I, I think the problem with big cities is, there's, you know, it's they're so big, it's hard for the traffic. It's It's hard to... Uh, keep the riders everywhere and the, and the traffic everywhere. There's major highways. So I can understand why sometimes they stay away from the bigger cities. It was my impression Waterloo, the campground, the main campground was really south of the metro area. So people didn't really ride through Waterloo, uh, although we stopped there. Okay. Um, what is it about smaller towns? We're in Manchester now, yeah. at Clear Lake, a lot of, I guess you'd call them Class 3A towns. <laughs> yeah. um, what makes them so good for rag bry stops? Well, I think they're big enough to handle rag bry stops. You know, they have the facilities and they have the campsites and, and they have enough people in the town to, to pull it off. So, But they're not so big that, that, that rag bry just, uh, you know, 
cuts the town in half or something like that. The town can still function, I think, I believe. And I, I, my, my philosophy, uh, the, the, these host towns, all these towns, are great to rag bright people because I think they know we're in here and we're out of here in 12 or 18 hours, you know. It's not like we're going to be here for a week. Uh, so if they can put up with us just for that amount of time and, and give us a good time, it usually works. And these towns of 8, 10, 12,000, I think they, they, they are a good size to handle it. What's been your impression of how well Manchester's been able to bounce back after uh, they were dealing with flooding just a week ago? Yeah, well, I'm impressed that they're able to host tonight. Uh, you know, we we drove out to Sioux City last Saturday, so I wasn't even around uh, for when the, you know the major the dam broke and the heavy rains and everything. But uh, I, I'm impressed because I wondered if they were going to be able to uh, to host Rag Bright. So I'm impressed. We talked to a team, uh, Team Kaibo, a bunch of uh, uh, Manchester people were on that team and. And they said they've been working hard back here to, to pull this thing off. And you know the weather's cleared off now, so I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a good uh, good day for Ragbri in Manchester. Gotcha, John. Uh, you know, obviously you've done this for 13 times. Yeah. You've built up uh, you know some sort of an affinity for Ragbri. But if there was one thing you could change about the event, what would that be? Wow, that's a good question. Um, boy, there's nothing that really really strikes me uh, that could be changed. I'm amazed that they've been able to keep doing it now for 38 years. That's what I'm amazed about. So they must be doing a lot of right things to bring people like me and all these other people back. I mean, I just come from Cedar Rapids. People come from all over the world to ride this event because it's a one of a kind. So I think they have found the secret formula and, and I can't just off the top of my head think of, man, I wish they'd change this or, or change that. All right. Anything else you want to add, John? Uh, I think it's a neat event for the state of Iowa. I think it's a great way to see our state, great way to meet people, and uh, a great way to stay in shape and just get out in nature for seven straight days. And uh, I think it's hard to beat. All right.